Time Podcast. Very exciting to have you back. It's another weekend in lockdown, so I thought it might be an extraordinary opportunity to look at the workshops. We often talk about workshops in interviews, or we talk about workshops in panels, but we've actually never spoken about the workshops itself. Today, that will all change, and I've picked three workshops that I want to have a quick look with you together. I've chosen those workshops purely based on my personal preferences. So if you go on the Time webpage, you will find a plethora of workshops available to you. Some of them will be password protected for the community only. Others are actually available for public as well. So if you have a second, definitely stop by the homepage and dive into your personal learning experience provided through the workshops. Now, first up, we are joining Richard Seva. Richard has done a workshop about public speaking. Uh, for those of you who do not know Richard, uh, Richard is the business owner of Changing Times, a uh, coaching, consulting, training company providing services to the travel industry. I'm sure most of you will be familiar with Richard. So let's have a look what he shared in regards to public speaking. Hello from a, a very gloomy, wet uh, and grey Victoria. I'm down in Mornington, where most of you will know we are in, uh, I think, week seven. And uh, we've got another seven weeks to get out the other side of this, but that's okay. We will get through it. We absolutely will. Yep. So this was obviously recorded in 2020 during the first lockdown in Melbourne. I do agree, though, with his message. We will get through it. it takes a little longer than we hoped for last year, but we're nearly there. Thank you for joining today. And um, what we're going to go through over the next so probably about 45 minutes, I have got a lot to go through. Um, but I've also left quite a bit of time at the end for us to have um, real good open discussions and points of view because this is a very interesting topic and, and I, I appreciate Sue and Time uh, asking me to, to talk about because I've got to say I love his accent. It's just gorgeous. I could just listen to him for hours. When I was a young lad and I went to my very first presentation skills training course, there were very strict rules on how to present. Uh, this was prior to PowerPoint. It was when we had the old acetates and we used to put them on the overhead projectors and we were told how to stand. We were told if you had a lectern, you had to hold on to the lectern for dear life. Don't let your hands go everywhere. You, were, you had to go through the... Uh, tell the audience what you were going to tell them, tell the audience and then tell the audience what you told them. And it really was very strict. I have done public speaking quite a bit myself, being a part of Toastmasters for many years. And I do agree, having all these rules really felt overwhelming to start with. Rules. So it's good that he points that out. I, I found over the many years now that Things have changed a great deal, not only with utilizing different types of technology, and we're going to talk quite a bit about using Zoom, Microsoft Teams, etc. Uh, but, but also, I think the attitude has changed dramatically, especially as we've been in lockdown all over the world, that we're using technology differently. And it is extremely hard to fully engage with an audience through Zoom, as an example, than when you've got everyone in a room. I think we'll all be in agreement on that. And how bad is it if you're on a Zoom call and you're presenting to a group and everyone's camera is off the worst? What I'd like to do is just run through a couple of things that I have seen uh, mistakes that I have made over the course of my career uh, in presentations and, and also to, to hopefully give you a couple of ideas to take away and to try and especially for our, uh, our friends across the ditch who are coming up to the graduations towards the end of October and you will be asked to stand in front of your peers and give a three minute uh, rendition of what graduating at time has meant to you, uh, I want to give a couple of ideas for you to think about. 
So none of this is scientific. None of this is a must do. I wanted to share some anecdotal evidence, some stories, and hopefully to give you all individually something to take away. That just shows what a great mentor Richard is, offering his own experience, his own learning, by admitting to errors and mistakes he's made throughout his career, passing that on for the next generation to benefit from that. Well, I think that's just amazing, right? And in a nutshell, that is what time is about. Well, next up, Andrew Siu, who was doing a workshop about Are You in the Room? Effective presentation skills to make sure the audience stays connected and the meeting is effective. Again, I've chosen this just out of personal interest. I'm very much into public speaking and presenting. There's a lot of other workshops available on the time workshop section on the homepage. So I strongly encourage you to stop by and have a look if there's anything else that you are especially interested in. But now let's listen to Andrew. So today I want to cover through three main points. So we're going to start with how our brains work uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about that shortly. Uh, we'll take a look at things through the perspective of the presenter or the meeting host. And again, it's not about how to be an effective presenter. It's just a few tips on if you're the one at the front of the room doing a presentation, just various different things that you can do or bear in mind during your preparation uh, that can help keep your audience in the room and, and keep them engaged. And then lastly, we'll just talk a little bit about being a good audience citizen. Andrew has been in the travel industry for quite a while as well. His experience has been nothing but gold for the next generation. So his workshop has been extremely inspiring for me to get some tips and new aspects about public speaking, but also about how to hold an effective meeting. Andrew himself has just recently started a new role as a corporate partnership manager at Sydney Living Museum. So we wish him all the very best for his new adventure. Um, just a quick introduction about me in terms of the workshop that I'm going to be uh, running through with you today. So I have been in the travel industry for a couple of decades uh, now, but um, today I'm going to use some of the information that I've learned wearing a different hat outside of the travel industry. So I'm quite interested in uh, neuroscience and I've done a few different courses. I've trained with the Neuro Leadership Institute and um, done a coaching course. So I'm a trained coach. Now, this was Sharon. As you've heard, Sharon is a coach and has very different knowledge from outside of the travel industry as well. And I loved that she brought it back into one workshop. Neuroscience is extremely interesting if you are able to master that because it allows you to teach yourself a lot of subconscious behaviorism that is very effective and beneficial for your career and everyday life, actually. I try to use it every now and then at tennis. Emphasis is on I try. And I've also done a course um, around neuroleadership, which looks into neuroscience, but then how you can use that science in organizations to be better organisations, to be better managers and um, around decision making and, and those kind of things as well. So I'm going to be using that information today um, as we go through. Shan did something next that probably no one has expected. She started doing a little breathing exercise with everyone on the call. Now, why did she do that? That is actually a great technique to make sure your audience fully focuses on the content of your workshop or presentation, but also to calm down, relax, and have an open mind about what is to come. That's a very good hint that you can definitely take away for your next presentation. So I've done a lot of talking in, uh, in about 45 minutes. Um, so I just wanted to do a quick exercise um, with you just to... I guess, reinforce um, what biases are and, and how they might impact in your life. So just a quick exercise, um, just a few uh, seconds for people to have a think about. Well, I'm not sure about you, but for me, if I do not practice what I've learned on a workshop straight away, it's in and out of my mind usually very often. So I really appreciate that little exercise and let's actually listen into the start of the exercise for you to get an idea how that works. Firstly, if you can think of a situation where you've ex that you've had recently where in hindsight 
you think that um, either that your action or someone else's action was based on an unconscious bias. So much easier to see this in hindsight than at the time. In case you can't think of anything yourself, I'll just give you a little hint. How often do we actually have bias against a politician just because he's from a certain party without actually listening? Um, and likewise, if you can think of a, a process in your work where you think uh, an unconscious bias could be hindering the outcome. So if you just want to take a few seconds just to go to think about those and maybe write them down. Um, if anyone's happy to, is comfortable to share with the group, that would be great. Um, whether you want to do it in the um in the comments or uh, take yourself off mute. And I'm just going to see if I can actually bring up the screen so I can see people. That is another aspect that I do appreciate about the time community. We come together and we talk about where the opportunities are by sharing where we have potential so-called shortfalls or where we have opportunities to further improve as a professional or as a human being. So I hope today's short overview of some of the workshops that are available on the TIME webpage has inspired you. And if it has inspired you, inspiration is great, but it's nothing if you do not make anything out of it. So please stop by the TIME webpage and just do a few of the workshops yourself. And also make sure you subscribe to our podcast, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, wherever where I know. Thank you again for listening. Have a beautiful day and talk soon.